you know, we just, our team, we knew we had to get back to ourselves. You know, these last three games that we've played that we weren't ourselves. And um, we talked a lot about how, you know, we were playing before these games and kind of before the this new year started, um, how we were playing more together. We shared the ball, uh, just kind of let played for each other. And I thought we did that really well tonight and was able to succeed from that. Brandon, can you just, can you describe what changes for you out there when it's you and Kava and, and he's able to, to maybe take some of the pressure off you? Yeah, you know, I would say it's, you know, it's like, Two, just two powerhouses out there, you know. Kava's, <laughs> Kava's great. He's like, he's like uh, Bane from The Dark Knight Rises, and I'm like Batman. <laughs> um, and so, you know, Kava, it's uh, it's great. You know, coach was talking to us a little bit beforehand how he wants to kind of play us a little bit more together. And so we had the opportunity. And I thought we did. Um, we did good together when we were in there at the same time. All you made a bunch of hustle plays today, and just kind of all around effort, especially with them kind of fighting back. I mean, just kind of what was. Now into you, just trying to like keep your, your team kind of in there. Yeah, I just think our energy is huge. You know, we talked about after the UCLA game and USC game about our bench energy. Um, you know, and just everybody being super excited for each other, making plays for each other. And I think uh, at the end of the day, when we play like that and share the ball the way we did without uh, turnovers, it's huge for us. For both of you guys, what have the last three, four days been like coming home from LA, you know, after the three losses, just trying to you know, come back in and get things right? You know, I think we just talked a lot um, amongst ourselves. We, we knew what we had to change. We knew what we've had uh, to be better at. You know, I think these, like I said, these last three games were, weren't our, our team, um, and we knew that. And just coming in and just cut each practice and having to get our, our minds right for this, for this game, um, and we're just going to you know, celebrate this win tonight and hopefully continue the way we played tonight and bring it to Washington. Right, same for you. Just over the last three or four days like after L.A.? Yeah, I think we were obviously disappointed, you know, and I think um, going through tough stretches is about how you respond. Uh, and I think we responded well tonight as a team. Uh, and it just, you know, it keeps putting us ahead in Pac-12 play. Uh, and I think we're just super excited going forward. Brandon, you went eight for eight in the first half. Looked for a while there, it looked like you were going to have a perfect game. <laughs> I think you only missed one, and you might have been fouled uh, on that three. But what uh, just what was it like for you out there? Just, they talk about being in the zone. Is that kind of? Yeah, you know, it's just kind of one of those nights for me. You know, just when you're making all that, and you know, it's just it's just a lot of fun being out there with um, with your team at that point. They're celebrating you. You're celebrating them, um, and just the energy that you know these guys give me um, each night. Craig talked about you know obviously your fourth year player. You know, but after everything that you went through last year, he said that you've got a lot more confidence. There's more leadership. Are you feeling that? I mean, is that is that kind of what you're trying to, to kind of put out there on the court? Uh, for sure. I definitely want to be, you know, more of a leader for this team, better example. Um, I think last year was uh, with, like, you know, the dif difficulties that I had a, to go through. Uh, it was hard to, to kind of be an example when you're, when you're out, not playing for so long. Um, and so this year it's just been wanted to come out and just show how hard we got to work and how we got to be in order to, to win. Raleigh, Coach said tonight was about taking care of business on your home floor. Is that the same mentality you'll take into Saturday? Yeah, you know, home wins are huge. Uh, and I think, you know, just shout out to our fans, everyone who came out tonight. Uh, it was huge for us. Um, and I just think winning on your home floor is big. Uh, and I think that's every team's goal, and especially our goal this whole season. Well, that's a great, it's a very good win for, for the running Utes. You know, Washington State was really hot. I mean, obviously UCLA is undefeated, and Arizona State has been on fire. But I thought they were the playing the best basketball. I mean, as good a basketball as anybody, uh, winning four of the last five coming into tonight uh, with a win at Arizona. Nobody's won at Arizona for two years. So these guys have been on fire from the three. You know, and uh, I, I, our guys did a heck of a job tonight and this week. Um, it's been a long 10 days. And obviously you're in the grind of a season. It's only three, you know, you say only three games, but – it's been a tough three-game stretch coming into tonight. And so when you have a youthful team and some inexperience, you know, we, we really challenged these guys, challenged them in a great way, and our guys stepped up in a great manner. We had, we had a, good, a very good week of practice coming in. I said that on the pregame radio. Um, we really worked a ton on execution on both sides. We worked on rebounding and defending sound uh, and getting back to our DNA something we've been able to hang our hat on, and we did not do either of those things on the L.A. trip um, or the Oregon game, for that matter. Um, 
And then on the offensive end, we really worked on executing and being patient and playing through the pass and playing more disciplined basketball. And I thought we did that tonight uh, as a whole. Obviously, we got loose on a few of those possessions. And then credit to BC, our upperclassmen, BC and Marco. I mean, BC, obviously, I mean, uh, what was he, eight for eight, I think, in the first half. And right out of the shoot, uh, he's aggressive and had a mindset. And, um, and then, you know, late in that first half, we played Kaba and BC together. And obviously, they were in their zone, and BC stepped out and knocked down a couple big threes and got fouled. Uh, I think he went on an 8-0 run by himself, if I'm not mistaken, um, to kind of get some separation going into halftime. And then I thought Marco just had a way different vibe and look to him tonight and just kind of did everything. You know, I thought he guarded really well, looking to make the extra pass, just was patient, not forcing the issue, a couple big and ones. Um, just kind of did a lot of things, was flying to the offensive glass and was playing the way that we need him to be. When you're upper upperclassmen and this kind of group, those guys have that responsibility. And then uh, I thought Raleigh just had a really good floor game and made so many great decisions, really finished well around the basket, made some tough shots um, there at, that rim, uh, at the rim, uh, and just made a lot of just right plays. So um, 20 assists to eight turnovers, huge for us. That's how we have to play. That's how we have to play. Um, we got to be able to play through the pass and just make simple plays and execute the way we did on um, that side of the ball. So proud of our guys. We, at the end of the day, though, we took care of business. Obviously shot 55%. It's been a little while. I think, well, maybe Oregon State. Uh, I feel like it's been a while. Um, but to have that kind of production on offense. And then obviously Steph and Gabe. Gabe goes four for eight from the three, which we need um, for him to do that. Hit some timely ones there, especially they cut it to six. Call a timeout, run a play for Gabe. He sticks that three. We get a stop, and then Marco gets the end one, and we kind of separate it from there. So it's a good dub for the Utes. You talked about obviously wanting to have your big, big lineup. You get that, and obviously it's successful. Do you just feel like that draw, that allows Brandon to draw himself out a little bit and stretch the floor, or kind of what's your vision there? Well, there's a lot of things that come into play there. It's 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 harder than it seems. It's BC can stretch it and shoot it no matter where he's at, but that also can be a big advantage when you're the five. Because it's hard to guard, and team, you know, bigs aren't used to guarding like that. What I, I just feel like it's twofold. Whoever that other, you know, it's BC and Kaba together. One of those guys has got to be able to guard the other on the perimeter, and it's not just mano and mano. You're like you have to have a different feel for spacing on defense and rotations and help side and getting what we call tags on pick and roll. There's just there's a lot of other nuances, and if you're like BC's told me, like, and he wants to do that, but he's like, Coach, I played five my whole life. <laughs> like, this is new, you know, for me. So, like, but he has an attitude that craves improvement, and we've been messing around with that a lot more. And then the flip side of that, Kaba, Kaba's a good player. Like, Kaba just does a lot of really good things that don't always show up in this, except for his rebounding and tips and deflect block shots. And so I thought that lineup was big. We said that in the locker room after the going to the halftime, we played the double big lineup. And that's when we sep you know, that's when we kind of got some separation going into the half. So uh, we want to keep looking at that certainly uh, because I think it can be good for us. But but it's but we just got to keep working on it and getting one of those guys comfortable guarding out in the perimeter consistently. That two two and a half minute stretch late in the first half where Brandon was just you know he was kind of doing everything. Is that is that how dominant he can be? You know what what we saw during that stretch. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a heck of a player. Like it's so hard. I mean. What he did last year was incredible, considering the ankle, the being in health and safety protocols, and then the uh, uh, the appendicitis. I mean, like, and so for him to be able to do all that on a team that was struggled offensively, like that tells you a lot about that guy. He fits into our system. I mean, it's twofold. He's perfect for our system, and I think our system is really good for him, the way we can move him all over the place. But he's elite. And here's what I'll tell you: it's his fourth year now. And you get to this time in your fourth year, like he has a different look to him right now. You know what I mean? He does. He's he's just, I mean, he's playing with a lot of confidence, but he's he's playing as a leader, you know. And you just, uh, I'm so proud of him and where he's come from and how far he's come. And now you get to this point, man. He's doing everything in every single way that he can. So he's he's a high level dude. What does it say about this group in the second half? Right, they get within five, and you guys had an answer. They're within six, you guys have an answer. Yeah, uh, you know, we were. it just felt like we were so close to blowing it open. But that's hard to do at this level, and it's hard to do against them. They muck it up. 
you know, we didn't help ourselves. We, you know what, we missed two free throws the first possession. Then Mar Ben did, then Marco missed a couple free throws. Then we missed a layup or two. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to be able to finish those plays. And then you're up by 18, right? Um, but we weathered the storm. They made a couple runs. And that second one, you know, um, when they cut it to that, we called the timeout. And I love the, the look of our guys in the huddle. And Marco was just like, we got this. Like, just keep fighting. You know what I mean? Stay aggressive. Stay in attack. And, um, and obviously, we ran the play for Gabe. And he had a – I mean, that's his shot. He's good at that shot. And for him to be able to stick that, I thought that was huge. And then, obviously, they went the zone late. We ran a play. And BC made a heck of a read to skip opposite. And Steph stepped into that three. And, and that was big. So, um, um yeah, so to be able to weather that storm, obviously it helps when you're at home and having our crowd. I want to thank our fans for coming out again tonight. And it's fun to see. I feel like it's just, you know, kind of incrementally just getting more and more consistent with our fans showing up, and it makes a big difference on impacting winning. Any other questions? Gabe had not shot particularly well the last three games. How nice was it to see a few go in? How did, how did he look to you after a few? I thought he looked awesome. I mean, the first half, I believe he was one for four. Um, I don't know, I thought maybe he forced one there, but you know, a guy like him, it's a fine line. Like he, he's such a good shooter. And there's just here's what my like, A, they're really good, but my concern going into this game, how well they were shooting the three and how we were not, right? Over the last three games. We hadn't so hopefully the law of averages kinda even out, right? They eventually they're gonna kinda come back. And we did. So for Gabe, I just felt like as a team. Um, we just executed so much better than we had been, right? And defining what exactly we're looking for and just playing way more connected and patient and not just cranking up some shot because it's, we kind of have an opening. Does that make sense? I thought tonight most of his shots were step-in threes or like rhythm on time on target threes where he wasn't just flying, you know what I mean, and cranking it. And our, I think our guys were more purposeful looking for him, looking for BC. And we had 42 points in the paint tonight, right? I know you asked about Gabe, but, like, I think that says something about just being a little more patient and playing inside out. Brandon is going to lead the team in scoring this tonight, but, <coughs> you know, even when he's going off, like, you guys had 14 from, from Rolly tonight and 12 from Gabe. How important is it to kind of get that supplementary scoring going? I mean, we, we have to do that. I, I thought Rolly was really, really good tonight. Like he he played very he played well in L A, he he was just very sound in L A. You know what I mean? He just didn't make many mistakes, which typically. But he was good on the offensive end, scored the ball efficiently. But tonight he I mean he was really good tonight. Um, you know they asked me on a pregame interview like okay Carl like what you just said Carlson's gonna so who's the next guy? Well, I mean Madsen's gonna have to score for us right? Like he he's the next obvious option. But I just feel like we're a very balanced team. So I'm not sure it's going to be, you know, this is option two or three. I think any given night it's going to be, you know, for a stretch there was Marco was our second leading scorer. Raleigh's been very steady Eddie. I, I just think we're going to have a balanced attack. And then on any given night, there's going to be maybe, you know, tonight, you know, whatever, whoever it was. I mean, Gabe, we're with Raleigh with 14 and Gabe with 12. And then the next night out it might be Marco and, you know, uh, whoever. Right, and so um, I just think that's how we're built until guys clearly can prove that they're going to be, you know, option two and three, so to speak. But we need balance, but we do have a a, a lead dog, so to speak, that can go out and get some buckets. And tonight goes twelve for thirteen. And what'd you say, John Vu? The highest um, percentage since Britton Johnson, right? To get twenty-eight or more points. Yeah. Washington beat Colorado tonight. You saw some zone out there, but obviously. <coughs> Like you're ready to handle yeah, uh, you know, it, it, like I said, when we talked on Tuesday, um, so they do play some zone, 20% of their defense possessions are zone. It's not exactly Washington zone, but it's somewhat similar. And we've seen more teams this year that, that try to do the Washington zone. And so um, we've had a lot more reps against it this year. We handled it really well last year. Um, but they're, like you saw tonight, they go into Colorado and win tonight. Like they're... They're, I mean, <laughs> they can get it going. They have some weapons on that team. They played Arizona to the wire at Arizona as well. And so they just, they're really athletic. They're very fast. They're high level in transition. And then they have the zone. And the, uh, I don't know, M-E-A-H, Mia, 
Braxton Mia, I believe. You'll see he's a monster in the paint. He protects the rim. Uh, I forget what game I watched. I think he had seven dunks. He just was like baby Shaq out there. And uh, uh, and they make it, you know, they can make life very, very difficult that way. So it's like I told our guys, we took care of business tonight. It was a big win tonight. They were playing so well. But we just, at the end of the day, we took care of business, right? And now we'll enjoy it till tonight. And we better be ready to go with our prep for Washington tomorrow. We got to take care of business again on Saturday. Got to win at home.